Monster Hunter keeps getting bigger, better, and flashier, and now Sunbreak pumps it up to the best it's ever been. If for some weird reason you never started Monster Hunter or you already played Rise to Completion, I'm going to convince you on why Sunbreak makes for the perfect time to be playing Boss Fights the video game. One of the first big things are the huge improvements to all 14 of the weapon classes. Take for example the used to be massively chunky slow greatsword, which can now be used so much differently you could almost call it the new 15th weapon type. With just one of the new switch skills, it gains nine brand new faster attacks, which make it play more like if Cloud Strife was effortlessly wielding the thing. Each weapon gains three new switch skills, and the majority of them really take what was already a great combat system and makes it even deeper. Next, the new end game to work towards is pretty awesome, which starts with the new Master Rank quests. The Master Ranks have some brand new cute brooding monsters to cuddle with, and your character build will have to be on point to do so. That's the real joys of monster hunting, obsessively tweaking your build so that you can cuddle with these things even more effectively. Or is that just me? Outside of the newcomers, the older monsters appear in Master Rank as well, with beefed up stats and some new moves to throw you off. The Sunbreak campaign and this new endgame are longer than the entirety of the base game of Rise, so this is now what I would consider to be the quintessential Monster Hunter game. There are some brand new maps to hunt on in Sunbreak, and there seems to be a big emphasis this time around on using environmental traps, with some new hazards added to the older regions as well. For example, this Rathian is having a terrible time at the moment, getting pummeled by a school of awkwardly sharp squids and then being bombarded by a group of laser crustaceans. That's a fun two words. There are many unique and somewhat hidden ways to pile on some extra DPS outside of your normal weapon flailing, so use the area itself to your advantage whenever possible. Next, the Switch Skill Swap lets you have two different movesets of Switch Skills on you at one time. This can double the amount of combat mechanics you'll have access to during a hunt, which adds a ton of depth, and there are a lot of cool synergies you can create with this system. I'm working on a few guides that go more in-depth with that kind of stuff, so stay tuned. You can also use the new switch skill swapping as an evasive tactic as well, which has some extra special uses that you'll need to discover. Or just watch my videos coming up soon. Ultimately, switch skill swapping adds way more flexibility and versatility to your most cherished weapons. With the new master ranks, of course you'll have some sexy new gear to craft from the body parts you shred off your dino victims. New armor sets have multiple higher tiers to them, with some entirely new armor skills that allow for strong new build combos. Along with new weapons as well, the higher rank ones now come with Rampage decoration slots. You'll need to craft these new special weapon decorations to socket into those, and they can add some pretty unique new synergies. And for your basic armor decorations, there's plenty of brand new ones, and older ones which use larger decoration slots but give multiples of some skills. There is a brain-spinningly amount of build variety now in Sunbreak, and this is just the tip of it. Let's be honest, when you seek the aid of other online hunters to help you out, sometimes they're absolute lifesavers, and sometimes they're absolute butt and cart three times in a row. However, if you're the type to prefer solo monster hunting, there's now a way for you to bring some AI companions to give the quest a multiplayer feel. As you progress in the Sunbreak campaign, you'll get access to different characters you can bring along for special follower collab quests, and you can even select which weapon type you want them to bring in. Take along a hunting horner if you want free buffs, some close range DPS, or keep everyone out of your way with some ranged weapons. Your favorite fuzzy buddies get massive sunbreak buffs, one of which is the ability to expand the number of maximum skill slots your palicos and palamutes can have. There are also brand new passive skills and the ability to swap skills on manually from your reserve buddies. 
Palicos also get the ability to swap out their support moves as well, so you can build out the ultimate cat, instead of relying on randomization. And if that wasn't enough pet improvements, Palicos also get new secret support moves, which functions kind of like an ultimate ability for them. There are five of those that do very different things, and I'll be breaking those all down in my next video. There's some new endemic life spread around all the maps now. The marionette spider lets you tether onto the monster and send them slamming in a direction, ideally towards the new wall creatures that explode in different elemental effects, depending on their type. There's also new buff bugs, not gigantic bicep bugs, but bugs that give beneficial effects, which improve the drop rate of materials while wyvern riding or improve their finisher move damage. Also, a new change in the options menu if you want to avoid wyvern riding entirely. Now when a monster is in a mountable state, you can continue to smash on them uninterrupted, if you wish. Another new feature to help you find these new endemic life, or anything else around the map, is your Palamute's sniff em out ability. Mark anything you want to find in here, and it will automatically highlight on your minimap. The Dango cooking system has received big improvements as well, which lets you gain brand new effects and modify the amount of a buff you receive. Now when you place an order, you'll have the option to enable the Hopping Skewers, which gives you a greater stat boost to the Dango you put on the very top, a medium boost to the middle, and a lower level to the poor one you put on bottom. This somewhat lowers the activation chance on the top ones, but this can be easily boosted back up with Dango tickets. Each of the Dango now have different tiers of their effects, like receiving a nice plus 20 fire resistance by putting that specific one on the top hopping skewer. Your build will now not be fully complete until you figure out the perfect combo of deliciously squishy balls. And last, the melding system gets some improvements, one of which is the ability to instantly create talismans. The new MP Accelerant item can be used when you're melding to speed up the process so that you don't have to wait until the next finished quest. When doing trade requests, you can now also enable backroom deals, which will lessen the amount of the chosen item but gives you new bonus items in their place. These might be materials that sell for a high amount or those useful MP accelerants that can speed up your talisman creation. And those 10 things were not even close to every new feature or progression system in Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak, but that's all I can show you for right now. I've got plenty of guides and gameplay tips for you coming up, so stick around if you want more Sunbreak. Or you can check out my somewhat new bonus content channel just called Boomstick Alex, which will have full master rank hunts on it if you want to see some of my raw gameplay. Thanks for checking all this out today. Long story short, Sunbreak is great, and I'll see you again real soon.